Hey there, I am Brian Goulet of GouletPens.com and I have a much anticipated Fountain Pen 101 video here for you for left-handed fountain pen users. Even though I started Fountain Pen 101 series over three years ago and I've been getting questions about fountain pens for lefties basically ever since, uh, well, even before I started the Fountain Pen 101 series, I've kind of dragged my feet putting one out because I'm not left-handed, so I don't have personal experience to draw from in this way. But I've talked to a lot of different people and tried to gather up information as best I could to help you lefties out who are interested in fountain pens. So some interesting information about left-handed folks for you. Um, August 13th is International Left-Handers Day. Not sure if you knew that, but it's something that you can celebrate for all you left-handed folks out there. And also, out of the, the seven last U.S. presidents that we've had, five of them have been left-handed, even though only about 10% of the general population is left-handed. A term that's often used for left-handed people is southpaws. And you you may wonder, what the heck is a southpaw? It's a term that was originally used for left-handed baseball players, specifically pitchers, because when pitchers are pitching in a baseball game, they're facing west. And if they are left-handed, their left arm is on the south side. So they are southpaws. That's where that comes from. Even though about 10% of the population are lefties, I feel like it's probably less than that that's represented in the fountain pen world, mainly because there are a few challenges that uh, fountain pens really kind of bring out. Uh, mainly ink smearing, because you're using a liquid uh, ink as opposed to a paste or a gel with a ballpoint or a roller ball, that you're gonna have more uh, prone to smearing. You're also gonna have more feedback or kind of a drag on the page. And then you might have some potential flow issues as well. And a lot of this stems from the fact that when you're writing left-handed, you're writing in a push motion when you're going from left to right as opposed to righties that are going in more of a pull motion. So that's where some of these issues are coming about. And these are really going to affect your nib size choices. So finer nibs are gonna be a little bit tougher because they're gonna push into the paper a little bit more and your ink selection is gonna be narrowed slightly depending on the nib size you're using and how much your hand is gonna be dragging across the page. So those are all things to take into consideration. The pen angle really matters as well. This is actually for lefties or righties. You wanna hold your pen at about a 45 degree angle from the paper. This is really how fountain pen nibs are ground uh, and to be held. So you wanna make sure that you have it about this way, specifically for lefties, and if, especially, especially if you're new to the fountain pen hobby, um, because most people coming over from ballpoints or roller balls are used to holding their pens at a steeper angle and having to really bear down to get that ball to push ink out. Fountain pens, you wanna have a little bit less pressure and drop your pen angle down, and that will really help to reduce kind of the scratchy feeling that you may be inclined to get when you're first getting into fountain pens. Probably the most important thing to understand when you're writing left-handed with a fountain pen is that your hand position will affect things more than anything. There are a lot of different terms out there for different hand positions. And what I mean by hand position is basically your hand in relation to the line that you're writing. And I've boiled it down to essentially three different positions. The underwriter, the side writer, and the overwriter. The first hand position is called the underwriter. And basically this is gonna be a mirror image with your left hand of someone who would be writing with their right hand. So your hand is gonna be underneath the line that you're writing. This position allows for the most versatility between your pen and ink choice. And many writers with this hand position don't even have to take nib sizes or inks into consideration. The next hand position is called the side writer. And essentially, this just means that your hand is directly in line with what you're writing. It's pretty obvious what the challenge is here. Your hand is gonna be smearing directly over top of the ink. And with fountain pen ink, that can become an issue because the dry time is a little bit longer on these and it can smear your writing. So fast drying ink really becomes essential here. Smaller nib sizes are often best, like an extra fine or a fine, though I'll be honest, there will be a factor of personal preference here. Flex nibs will be a challenge due to the push motion as the nib will be kind of digging down directly into the paper. And stub nibs can be used, but they might look a little bit odd due to the angle that you're holding them. Turning the paper to the left could help to fix some of these smearing issues, so that may be something you wanna try. The third hand position is called the overwriter or hook-handed writer. 
And this is re really kind of extreme. It's where your hand is completely above the line that you're writing on. It still has a potential for smearing, not quite as bad as side writers, depends on how extreme it is. And sometimes exaggerating the hook can actually help prevent smearing because your hand is kind of getting out of the way. Flex nibs are basically unusable in this position. Stub nibs can actually kind of emulate a righty. It's just coming from the opposite angle. And paper turning might end up being rather extreme with this hand position, but it's certainly an option. One really important thing that I want to drive home here is that practice can actually help to completely change your hand position. Now, practice in general is going to happen because when you're writing with fountain pens for the first time, you're going to slow down and write a little more intentionally anyway, especially if you're just getting back into cursive for the first time in a while. I know that's the case for me when I got into fountain pens. But uh, I've actually heard from a number of lefties who weren't happy with the restrictions they had with their existing hand position. So they intentionally retrained themselves to write as an underwriter to give themselves the most versatility as far as their nib size and ink choice. It's definitely not easy. It takes a while to do, but it can be done if you are determined. So now that I've talked a little bit about just what it is to be left-handed, we've talked about the different hand positions and stuff, I want to make some product recommendations for you that can help you in getting started in your fountain pen hobby if you are left-handed. So just in general, I will say that there is definitely an element of personal preference that goes on here. So kind of hold on loosely to any recommendations that I may make to you. These are just kind of a good starting point for you to consider. So if you are an underwriter, you really kind of have a lot of flexibility as far as what you want to write with. Um, you're going to have some personal preference and things like that. And in general, you don't have to take too much consideration into your nib size or ink choices unless you're getting into stub or flex nibs. Those can take a little bit of practice, a little bit of finesse. They kind of do anyway, even for righties, but for lefties especially because you're going in more of a push motion. You might have to turn the paper a little bit, try moving your hand when going with these nib choices. Now for side riders and overriders. You all are going to have to take the most consideration into the products that you use due to the fact that you're going to have a propensity for smearing and stuff like that. So I've broken it down into ink, pens, and paper. So let's get into the ink first. Fast drying ink is really going to be probably your best bet. Uh, Noodler's Bernanke, blue or black. Noodler's Q-Ternity are all fast drying. Private Reserve has several different fast dry inks. The Diatramentis Document inks are also fast drying and waterproof. And then there's some other inks that are not particularly formulated for fast drying, but that have been recommended to me by several left-handed users. Um, so brands such as Schaefer, Waterman, Pilot Aero Shizuku, and then Rohr and Klingner Salix and Scabiosa. All of these inks tend to be on the quick side as far as drying goes. Now there will always be a trade-off between quick drying inks and feathering and bleed through. Basically the way these quick drying inks work is they're designed to absorb very quickly into the paper and then spread out. So it doesn't smear your hand across the page, but it is going to look, you know, flatter in color on the page and it might bleed through the back a little bit more than a conventional ink would. So you have to take that into consideration. I always recommend reading reviews to see the dry times and get some ink samples and just try them out for yourself and see if they work for you. We have a Goulet quick dry sampler set that can be good if you just don't know where to start. Now let's talk pens. Some people really prefer to have as fine a nib as possible so that you're putting as little ink on the page as you need to. For pens like this, I would recommend basically anything Pilot with an extra fine or a fine nib. Platinum Preppy extra fine is really quite fine. The Platinum Carbon Desk Pen is really good, and the Faber Castell Extra Fine is pretty darn fine as well. I would avoid soft nibs, flex nibs, and stubs just kind of all together, especially if you're just getting into the fountain pen hobby because it's really just going to complicate things more than you need to. You kind of have to be a little bit brave if you're going to try some of these things out. Now, there are some people that prefer to have you know, nibs that are a little broader because when you're dealing with a really fine nib in kind of this push motion, it can tend to kind of dig into page if you write with a lot of pressure. So some people actually prefer more kind of a medium nib that can really depend, especially if you're using a fast dry ink, then you can have a little more flexibility as far as which nib choice you go for. So if you want to go a little bit on the medium side, I would recommend a Pilot Metropolitan is really good. The fine nib is very fine. The medium nib is pretty fine as well. 
The Lamy Safari, or basically almost any Lamy pen, can be really good because it has swappable nibs. So you could get an extra fine, you could get a medium, you can kind of try it out for yourself without having to invest in entirely new pens. And then Schaefer pens in the medium are, are pretty good as well um, because they work well in a push motion. The one thing I do want to talk about is left-handed nibs. It's something that people ask about, and they're not all that common. They're just kind of talked about here and there on the internet. There aren't that many companies that make them anymore because they don't really do that much. For most people that I've talked to who are left-handed that use left-handed nibs, they're essentially just medium nibs. And if you're using them in an underwriter or side writer motion, you really kind of can't tell a difference anyway. So I wouldn't even go on the hunt for too many left-handed nibs. Now let's talk paper. You know, paper, you know, it's not like they make left-handed paper, so you're gonna have a lot of the same considerations you would even if you were right-handed. The main thing to kind of take into consideration is you got uh, papers that are gonna be smoother and have more ink resistance to them are gonna have a longer dry time. So papers like Rhodia, Clairefontaine, if you want the maximum smoothness feel, that can be good, but you're gonna sacrifice some of the dry time. If you wanna go with something like a Leuchtturm or a Banded Apple or Apica, something like that, Dry time is gonna be a little bit faster, but again, it's not gonna feel quite as smooth. So it really depends on kind of which route you're going, especially for you side writers and over writers. I'd recommend the Goulet Notebook Sampler Set if you wanna just try a variety of them, because experimentation is gonna be key here based on your nib and your ink preference. For more information about this, and if you wanna talk directly with some other uh, left-handed fountain pen users, Fountain Pen Network can be a really good source, as well as Reddit. There's a lot of good threads on there about writing with uh, fountain pens with left-handed. So I would recommend you check those out. I also encourage you to leave comments on YouTube or on the blog. That way you can all kind of help each other out. I'm happy to answer whatever questions I can there, but um, the community here can really help you out quite a bit. So thank you to everybody who provided this feedback. I've been kind of scoping out for years, but then specifically people on Facebook who provided feedback about writing uh, left-handed. Appreciate that very much. You can check out more of these products on gouletpens.com. And if you haven't subscribed to the YouTube channel already, I highly recommend you hit that subscribe button. Uh, thanks so much for watching this and right on.